What's going on guys, Spidey here, and this week we're gonna learn my favorite visual card trick. It has seven magic moments, two surprise endings, gets some of the best reactions I've ever seen, and the best part, it's done with an ordinary deck of cards. Here we go. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. You know, I've been going through the comments over the last couple of weeks and a whole bunch of you have been telling me how much you've been enjoying the tutorials because it gives you something to practice and learn while you're at home and then do for your family and friends. And that just means the world to me. So I said to myself, I really have to give you guys something special. This is what we're learning today, my favorite visual card trick. It has so much going on. It's just magical moment after magical moment. And at the end, they, they just have no way of knowing how any of it was done. It is beautiful. In fact, I love this trick so much that 10 years ago when I was touring with my close-up show, I opened with this. This was the opener of my show. That's how much I love it. So without any further ado, we're gonna go right to the performance of this because you know how important performances are for me. Here it is, check out the performance. One of the things I hear the most often when I do magic for people is I wouldn't want to play cards with you. Don't play cards with this guy. Ha! Oh. I'm going to tell you guys why it's a really bad idea to play cards with a magician. It's not for reasons you think. It's not because we can make you choose a card and then find it. There's a lot of other reasons. One of them is because a magician can always cut to any cards he wants in a deck no matter how well it's been shuffled. For example, if I take these cards and mix half the cards the wrong way, you could see a whole bunch of cards going in upside down. I can still cut to any four of a kind. I'm gonna go for the aces. I'll cut the cards three times each time and it'll always be an ace. Here we go. One, two, three. That's the first one, the ace of diamonds. We'll do it again. Remember, three cuts each time. One, two, three. That's the second one the ace of hearts. That's two down, two to go. Watch the third one. One, two, three, that's the ace of spades. And that just leaves one ace. Check it out once again, three cuts. One, two, three, seven. See, that's the second reason you shouldn't play cards with a magician. Because if we get a card we don't like, we can change it. Here's what I mean. If I take that seven, and I change it into an ace, that would be a four of a kind. And that would be incredible. Wouldn't that be the coolest thing ever if that was an ace? I agree, that would be pretty cool, but I can't do that. What I can do is touch the aces and turn those into the one, two, three, four, sevens, and that is a four of a kind. The third reason you should never play cards with a magician is because we can arrange the cards in any order we want in a second, in a split second. I'll show you what I mean, look. That's it, that quickly. Remember how these cards were a complete mess? Some face up, some face down? Well now, they are all face up. Except for four cards right in the middle. And those are the one, two, three, four aces. Exactly as I promised. But the ultimate reason you should never play cards with a magician is because we cheat. We don't play fair. See, I cheated. That's how I knew where these cards were. I marked them on the back. There's a secret mark on the back of these that allows me to know which ones they are. I'll show you. Look, I don't know if you're going to see it. It's subtle. Look at the back of that card. Do you see how it's red? See that? I don't know if you see it. And that one's red as well. And this one and that one too. And if you look at these ones, these are also all red on the back. They're marked. That's the marking. That's how I knew where they were because these cards are not only red, they are the only cards in the entire deck that are red. All the rest are from a blue deck, and that's how I knew how to find them. And now you can give these out, they could check it all out, there's nothing to find, everything is examinable. So there it was, I hope you guys enjoyed that. As you can see, it's just one magical effect after the next. I think almost any amazing thing you can do in a card trick is part of this trick. You find cards, cards magically change, the deck magically reorients itself, color changing deck at the end, it's like all there. It's the perfect trick as far as I'm concerned. Now, a little bit of history. 
The original base of this trick is called Tidal Belt. It's invented by a magician called Martin Nash, who was an expert of close-up and gambling tricks. I saw it for the first time about 20 years ago, fell absolutely in love with it, but there was two things about it that I wanted to change. The first was, I didn't really care for the presentation. I wanted to have a more compelling presentation, which is what I did. And the second thing is, I noticed if I made a couple of changes, that throughout the routine, although it seems like they see all the backs of all the cards, they're only really seeing the backs of eight cards. So there's a way to do this, that at the end you can do a color changing deck, which to me was like this huge aha moment. And from the moment I incorporated that, that's the way I did it, that's how I opened my show. Now before we get into the explanation, I'm gonna say this. You have a choice to make. If you want the stronger version with the killer ending, you're gonna need a deck of cards and then eight cards from another deck. But if you want this to be a little bit easier to carry, just one deck, you can do that and I'm gonna show you how, but you won't have that color changing deck at the end, which for me is such a great way to end it. Anyways, without further ado, here's the explanation. So what you're gonna need to get this ready is two four of a kind. So here I have the sevens and the aces. Now if you want that killer ending where all the cards are a different color and it gets incredible reactions, these are from a different deck, so they're from a red deck. But if you want this to be a little bit more impromptu and use only one deck, you can. You're just not gonna have that killer last phase, but you'll still have a bunch of other amazing phases. So I'm gonna explain this assuming you guys are doing the version with the different colored cards. You're gonna take your cards and you're gonna alternate them. So ace, seven, ace, seven, ace, seven, ace, seven. Order doesn't matter. You're gonna end up like this. Then you take those cards and you're gonna give them a good bend like this, all of them. A good bend. This is gonna save your life later, you'll see why. These all go on top of the deck like this and that goes in a red box in this case because that further sells the illusion that this is a red deck. Now again, if you're doing this with just one deck, you don't have to worry about the different colored box. That goes there. So to start, you're gonna open the deck and you're gonna pull out the cards like this and you're gonna place them in your hand face up. You're gonna spread through and show that all the cards are different without saying, look, they're all different. It's just in the pattern as I'm talking. You can go back to the performance to see what I say. Casually show this. When you come back, you're gonna do a move which is gonna secretly reverse the top card and place it at the bottom. Here's how. As you're talking, your thumb, your whole hand here is gonna put downwards pressure like this. And with the support of the left hand, the right thumb is just gonna flick that one ace like that. Like this. And that's gonna happen in your hand over here. So your left hand is there and you're just doing that. Then you're gonna back up all the cards, leave that one ace in your hand, basically there, and the rest of the deck is gonna move forward and you're gonna stop there. And you're gonna say, you're gonna finish your sentence. So that kind of looked like, you know, you were just squaring up the cards. Then you're gonna grab the whole deck from here. Now, they're seeing this, they're not seeing that card because they're in front of you. You're grabbing the deck from here, you're turning it over, you're placing it there and you're pushing the whole thing forward. And what that's done is it reversed an ace at the bottom. Obviously they have no idea that happened. Now it's gonna look like you're mixing half the cards the wrong way. Here's how, there's actually a discrepancy here but there's a way to hide that. If I take the cards like this, there's two problems. First of all, they see a blue back. Second of all, it doesn't make sense for me to turn this hand over and for there to still be a face down card. Which is why the way we do it is we grab a bunch of cards, about half, and you're not going to do this, you're going to do this grand gesture with your whole body. That way it's harder for them to follow it. Go back to the performance, you'll see my whole body shifts and I do like this really big move so they can't really follow what's what. Now you're here. You're going to do what's called a pharaoh shuffle. So you reposition here, you grab this from the side, and it doesn't have to be a good pharaoh shuffle. Basically, you're just wiggling these cards like this, and they're weaving into each other. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, a mess. As long as the top card is face down, like that. Now you show them that a bunch of cards are going the wrong way. 
you hold this here and you push. Now they think that half the cards were mixed the wrong way. What's actually happening is you have one face down ace, whole bunch of cards face up, and then at the bottom you have the sevens and the aces. Now you're gonna do the same thing three times. You're gonna double undercut two cards from the bottom to the top. Here's how. You're gonna grab the deck like this, and as you're talking, again, you're gonna put pressure like this, like we did earlier for the one ace, but you're gonna drop two cards, two aces. I'm sorry, a seven and an ace. Like that. And your pinky, your left pinky, is going to keep an opening there. That's called a pinky break. So that's happening while you're talking in this position. And your pinky goes in. And then you could stop there as you keep talking. I have a pinky over two cards now. Now in the performance, when I did that, at some point we heard a bit of a flick flick, but that's because my mic is really close to the deck. Don't worry about that, in real life they will never hear it. Now you're gonna double undercut those two cards to the top. Here's how that works. My right hand comes over and takes over that opening. So as I grab the cards like this, my thumb is above those two cards. My left index grabs a bunch of cards here and kicks them over to the left. My left hand grabs these, brings them to the bottom here, adds them to, that op to those two cards. Now, half that packet comes right back up where it came from, and now you grab everything up until that opening and bring those up. And that to them looks like you gave it three cuts and you cut to an ace. Now, to make it seem like you're putting the ace down, you're gonna do what's called a double lift. If you don't know what that is, I'll leave a link in the description that teaches you how to master a double lift, but basically it means you're turning two cards over as one. Now, remember how earlier we gave those cards a heavy bend? That's gonna help you a lot here because this ace and this seven are both bent pretty severely upwards. So it's very, very easy for you with your thumb to put a bit of pressure for your index to come over and almost effortlessly lift two cards. See, I didn't have to prepare anything. I just come over and I lift because they're both bent. You just pick it up, slide it over, and turn it down, and now they think an ace is going down, but it's actually a seven. Now you can do that whole thing again. Two cards, cut, here, cut, cut, and now you've cut, they think, to the second ace. And again, super easy, you just grab those two cards, turn them over, they think that's an ace, it's a seven. Then again, here, one, two, pinky, blah, 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 that's two down, two to go. Come back, thumb grabs that opening, one, two, three, that's the third ace, same thing, really easy double. Look how effortless that is. And now for the last one, you're gonna do it a little different. You're not dropping two cards, you're dropping one card, just that seven. Of course, you're not doing it like this, because they would see that, it's being done here. Again, you go back to the performance, see how I do it. Now you're undercutting one card. One, two, and now you cut, and you look disappointed, that's a seven. You drop the seven, notice how often they saw uh, the backs of cards. They're 100% convinced this is a red deck now. Dude, they've, seen, they've seen too many face down cards. That goes there, this goes down, you take the seven. You say the second reason that they shouldn't play cards in the magicians because we could change cards. Now you're gonna do the most suspicious looking thing in the world. It doesn't have to be what I'm doing, but just come up with the most like suspicious kind of gesture because you want them to think it was suspicious and then when you show that it didn't change, it's like, oh, damn. So you say, we could change cards. I do this, I go here and in a very clenched way, I pass it through like this and I keep my hand clenched because I want them to be like, what the hell was that? Now you go, if that's an ace, that would be incredible, wouldn't it? And you go, I agree, that would be great, but I can't do that. Now they relax. But here's what happened. You weren't able to change one card, but you're about to change three. Their universe is about to get shattered. Because you touch here, and I like, now you can turn it over with the hand, but I like to flip it over with the card like this. That way they know I couldn't have touched it. And now, those are the four sevens. Guys, this gets screams. I've had people like, just yell and run around. It's Three cards just changed to a four of a kind. Now you go back here, you do this, and now, again, they are convinced that was a mess, because even as you were doing that cutting sequence, they saw a lot of face down cards. 
Now you slowly spread and you show that all the cards are now face up except for the four aces in the middle. That just ends up that way. You don't have to do anything. One, two, three, four. And now you milk this last moment. I love the line of saying, I don't know if, I don't know if you could see that, but that one is red on the back. Can you see that? Because in their heads, I want them to go, what are you talking about? Of course we can see that they're reds. What are you, an idiot? Like that's, I really want them to think like, what is this guy talking about? So see, those are red and I don't know if you see that, but these are red as well, because they have no idea where this is going. Because they're convinced that that's a red deck. But now I go, see, that's how I found them. Because not only are those red cards, those are the only red cards. And guys, once again, this gets complete chaos as a reaction, because in their heads, that was a red deck. So really milk that moment, and the beauty of it is you can leave everything there, they could pick it up, they could check it, there's just no explanation. So there it was, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you're gonna take the time to practice those sequences to make them look smooth and you will have a miracle on your hands that just gets insane reactions. Please remember to hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on for more tutorials of my absolute favorite magic and mentalism and I will see you guys on the next one.